Hello, this is Michael Hexter, and welcome to Politics 2100 here on YouTube. So this episode, I'm sort of continuing on from the last couple episodes. Uh, I call this Why Moral Narcissism Among Liberals and the Left Leads to Political Stasis and Victories for the Right. So um, I'm trying to draw out what I think is a difficult concept, is a concept that is not native to people who are interested in politics, um, but uh, is a combination of a psychological point of view and a political point of view. Um, we're trying to show you where the, in some sense, the rubber is meeting the road in politics in the psyches of people in different ways. And, and the differences in the success or failure of political movements has something to do with their their personal but also group psychologies okay and um and i'm talking that there's a particular type of narcissism that i'm calling moral narcissism and so uh this is different from the kind of malignant narcissism of a donald trump or um you know, a, a sociopathic narcissism um, or let's say criminal sociopathic narcissism. I have been making distinctions lately between what I'm calling normal sociopathy and criminal sociopathy. Um, and we find at the top of American politics, um, which is drenched in money, among other things, there's a lot of legalized corruption there. Um, there is not a lot of people who are motivated by a commitment to service to other people, a commitment to political ideals. And um, I mean, there's a mix, there's an admixture uh, in certain areas of that, but the dominant forces in both the Republican and Democratic parties are the ones with allied with big money, with the uh, donor class and, or the, fra as, as I've been, describing the fractions of the donor class that are aligned variously with the Republican and Democratic parties. But then there's also this common area. Uh, for instance, the banks uh, are uh, patrons to both parties, uh, the financial sector, and they are um, one of the most powerful, the most powerful sector of the economy um, or of the, the they're certainly the, represent some of the richest people and, and they in an economy dominated by private capital and capitalism, they are the representatives of capital, uh, at least in in terms of uh, the financial aspect of it. So, but anyway, um, moral narcissism is uh, a a a pitfall of um, being uh, somewhat committed to or very intensely committed to uh, high ideals um, uh, and and potentially creating a better society and and trying to be a better person as well. So so there's a, a mixture of trying to be a better person or better bettering society overall. So there's a um, there's a con fundamental confusion I think in our society about um, and and you could say we live in an age of narcissism, an age of of people um, being very involved in their own consumption, being very involved in their own um, uh, their own uh, world, imaginary worlds in some way or another, uh, the ones they choose from social media, so forth and so on, and also um, uh, they're being uh, influenced and conditioned to be also self-interested. I don't think people are fundamentally um, only self-interested, but I think that they are being encouraged to do to be that uh, in our society um, for a number of reasons. Among other things, it's very functional for the ruling class of our society to have people who are mostly concerned with their own personal consumption, own personal welfare, so forth and so on, not as concerned about the overall... Um, uh, uh, welfare of society, the welfare of the ecosystems upon which our society rests, that requires um, taking a step back and out of one's own personal 
um, uh, you know, interests and personal, not not necessarily entirely, but it, it takes or, or certainly the things that one is that, that that connects you with other people in terms of your consumption and so forth and so on. But, you know, you're you're the, the biggest um, uh, influencers on this, pl the, this platform and other platforms, in other words, YouTube or or Instagram and so forth and so on, are those that share their um, consumption um, choices with each other and they become the most popular people in ways, though there are also some that are about ideology and 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 about po politics and so forth and so on. So it's not only, uh, uh, but but it's certainly an easier path um, uh, to be focused on one's own uh, felicity, one's own, but from a consumption point of view, not from a sort of more holistic um, communal or societal uh, well-being or, or to try to try to create a, a, a society that is better than this current society that is a minority concern that's not something that many people are focused on so so anyway you can see why so there's a version of that trying to be better or trying to do better or be better so forth and so on that can play into uh, a preoccupation with the self or preoccupation with one's image and and that functional part or that part that is uh, adapted to our society you could call morally narcissistic or in other words you're you're focused on how you appear um, as a either good or not good person um, uh, and, and in terms of your own uh, uh, in terms of who you associate with so forth and so on or and that that can also shade into various kinds of you know even class um, uh, uh, membership a membership in a particular group of people you are associate yourself with quote unquote better kinds of people and therefore you are um, uh, uh, a better person so forth and so on and so there is a particular problem and this is something that has emerged really since the 1960s um, where you had a diversion in, in, or, or divergence I'm sorry in the 1960s between the labor movement and the movements for social change that are called the new social movements where you uh you didn't have the um you didn't have the uh uh identity that you had with the left as you had in the new deal era so forth and so on with sort of a general class interest or or that that labor and being liberal and left were sort of part of the same uh, movement that sort of was partly influenced by American communists, among other people, or socialists more generally, and a, and a labor movement that was uh, much larger than it is currently, um, and and also more active certainly in the 1930s and 40s, and up to the, maybe the 1960s. Um, so, but anyway, you had in the 1960s a divergence into two different. Uh, parts or not more, more than two really multiple parts of the left and so that ne didn't necessarily mean that people would become so self-absorbed or or so concerned about their how they appear and are they a better kind of person are they morally superior to other people okay that's a, a sort of an, a a way to rephrase the idea of moral narcissism um but it created a vast array the 1960s and the new social movements that arose there, a vast array of questions about good behavior, about being, you know, sort of a better person, you know, but not being racist, not being sexist, not being homophobic. Um, and and so that that started to um, appear to or could be reformulated as basically a, a certain kind of uh, self-improvement program that you could have for an individual but not necessarily be attached to a movement for really big change in society and the there was sort of a compromises made in different ways that people um, traded made a trade for for cultural power versus political power in other words the movement like the women's movement the um uh, you know, civil rights movement, um, uh, they saw in the 1970s, in a way, some of their power 
being transformed into cultural power and they thought the realm of culture was where and and which also could become the realm of subjectivity the realm of it doesn't necessarily have to be that but but it became divorced from creating better government policy that did certain things or uh, certainly a visionary pol there were certain things that were you know touchstones of you know the voting rights act or you know the era when it still was being discussed the equal rights amendment uh, of the to the constitution so these were all there were some concrete um acts but there, there's just there generally there was a giving up on visionary change in the area of public policy that would accompany the cultural interests and so they became sheared off and and there was a way in which you know you could you had certain like talented uh you know musicians and so forth and so on who were you know black and you know hispanic and so forth and so on and 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 who uh um you know became icons of the era so they they had a power that was um that in some sense the the rights the cultural the crt um you know politics of the the current uh neo-fascist right wing uh, is a, in a way a reaction though that was that's just a version of what the new right in the 1970s and 80s they they were against this sort of what they saw as this cultural quote unquote cultural Marxism that they uh, uh, imagined that these movements were quote unquote Marxist when they weren't but anyway or the not movements but these cultural changes that they didn't like and uh, so anyway um, but they're still you know they're they're the the tendency toward moral narcissism or toward um uh becoming very um involved in what I, what one could call a certain kind of virtue ethics so that you um were tr about it was about you achieving a higher level of virtue you personally and so politics was about assigning people to various levels of virtue and it it was less about let's create a movement that will do certain things in society and and so this uh virtue ethics so that's one of the meta ethical uh frameworks that we have for ethics more generally but anyway virtue ethics is about you know being a more virtuous person um and 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 developing oneself into uh and it's it's quite you know fits very well with, into an individualistic society so anyway um moral narcissism is one of the um expressions that you see in the um the le leadership of the democratic party and also among cultural figures that surround it that are about creating the sense of moral superiority and 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 among the people who were involved in it and they are not they've in my opinion they've often lost sight of or they're maybe not even uninterested in actual transformational change actual um, move, social movements that drive that change and they're more interested in maintaining a certain let's say homeostasis or or you know constant equilibrium emotional equilibrium in our current society and their mo emotional equilibrium involves identity as being quote unquote a progressive or uh, a liberal but it other it doesn't mean shifting uh behavior shifting attitudes shifting you know uh society through politics through movements so forth and so on it means this kind of uh, homeostasis as i'm saying so anyway this um and i uh um i see that also in some of the programs i i listen to uh i think the majority report um which i think does great you know reporting and or or commentary let's say and and interviews you know sometimes to me um is a kind of my certainly part of my homeostasis uh, personally a, as a progressive so forth and so on but I also am am dissatisfied with that kind of uh, comfort and for instance you know my disagreement with their coverage of Marianne Williamson is in my opinion 
uh, where I differ from them, from them and from their approach is that I think it's about challenging oneself and challenging us to embrace the new, in this case, Marion Williamson, as a potential winner of the Democratic uh, nomination um, and at least op be open to that possibility. Um, and, uh, and, and to some extent, the Bernie Sanders movement had become or has become a stale, uh, it needs renewal um, and change to really, and when I, when I mean the Bernie Sanders movement, it includes, among others, the squad. It, it's a movement of small donor supported, um, you know, social democratic slash democratic socialist, you know, left candidates uh, who gain office most often in uh, you know, in Congress, but not only in Congress, but in city councils and in uh, so forth and so on, in in different parts of the country. But um, and 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 so it's it's certainly it's had a great um, galvanizing effect relative to the time of 2015 or 2014 and so forth and so on. Um, but uh, but anyway, the um, I think this. Uh, what moral narcissism does is it, it blocks your, you know, your ability to embrace this, the, the, that this is about changing a society or a reality that is not you, but is also you to some degree, but it's, but, and that, that you are, need to throw into some doubt or some, uh, or, or at least be, be open to a reality that isn't, what you hope and expect it to be, that it will be something different, maybe better, maybe worse, but it will be something different than your expectations. So, and, and I think also, so the, 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 one of the things about moral narcissism and why it, I think, you know, the right wing had, you know, there are certain cultural critics from the right wing that, that have this anti-moral narcissist, uh, discourse and their anti-moral narcissist discourse dismisses the idea of morality per se. They think that it's pretentious itself to even have a morality. And, and this is something that we need to discard as being ridiculous and stupid, but it is the fight between the, the, the way the, the moral narcissists of the left, as I'm calling them, and the right fight it out is that it's it's about they make it about their identity rather than the fact that no we can't survive as a species without an ethical uh commitment to ideals and so forth and so on that are are not yet achieved okay things that, that to having a conscience of some kind that drives us to achieve things that are not yet existent okay and and that's something that the right wing wants to um, demolish. They want to say that's not what we want. So, but they do. But the 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 stance of what I'm calling moral narcissists of the left is that they, and this goes back to the 1960s, the idea of a limousine liberal, so forth and so on. That that people or that that the the social movements of the 60s often were, um, if they weren't if they weren't necessarily based in in college campuses, but college campuses were places where there was a um, uh, a very highly sympathetic uptake of those movements. For instance, the civil rights movement, the you know uh, uh, the women's movement, so forth and so on. These were er and the anti-war movement. Um, so these were areas where people who were going through a higher education and and who did come often from a a, a relatively privileged background, they were more open to these forms of change and and they. In some sense, some of them saw it as basically a better lifestyle for them to be involved with at least the periphery of the, some of these social movements that emerged in the 60s and 70s um, and, and it's, it's sort of their own personal liberation rather than necessarily the liberation of society overall. They saw it as as that they are and, and they absorbed it as such. And then they they then kind of left it there and they didn't really hold on to the idea of a. Uh, uh, the society as a whole and collectively trying to make the society better and and also their relative position in society and understanding that. And anyway, so the 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 right wing has used some of the 
you know, the the self-absorption or the um, of some people on the left, some people on the left and liberals. They're not not near not everybody and not there are many, many great people there on the left and in, among, you know, liberal groups and so forth and so on or people who who believe in reform, believe in change. Um, so uh, and 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 I'm not saying it's the right wing is trying to make it all about their own selfish personal liberation or their own selfish, you know, uh, desires and not and an imposition on that, that they potentially are Maoists who are going to impose a, uh, um, a a cultural revolution on uh, upon, you know, unwilling people who don't share their values or views and so forth and so on. So they try to stylize and and shoehorn people into their view of what a moral narcissist is and what i'm saying is it's a pitfall in the process of people trying to have an ethical commitment to other people solidarity with other people simp empathy with other people and not, it's not a badge the, the, that empathy that solidarity is not a badge for you necessarily it, it could function as a badge if you want to be found with other people and want to connect with them but it's also it's more than the badge it's it's about the movement toward that collective change that we're working on and so and and so some people say well of course that's obviously what we want but still in reality um sometimes it appears as though people it's about self puffery or self you know uh, personal identity politics and and that's a shame and that's uh that's something that we should become you know more aware of and it's not i, I don't know if i can make a politics uh uh of just warning about moral narcissism and so forth and so on but i think it's it's as i showed in a couple uh or i don't know i think i hoped i showed a couple episodes ago um the fundamental conflict in the Democratic Party is wrestling with the um, the self-image of the powerful who think of themselves as a better sort of person. Uh, those those powerful people. There are other powerful people who don't, who who just are about greed and about about getting power for themselves and so forth and so on, or using um, formula to just advance their own ambition their own economic interests so forth and so on so um it's not um it's not the only issue and not the but in the context of the democratic party in the context of suppo the supposed left the supposed leftward option in our political system that it currently is in control of two uh, branches of government or two one and a half branches of government um, uh, that that option, those people in that option, in that are are attempting to exclude the people who are actually or who potentially could could um, do actual things that change society, or or at least they're trying. We're trying desperately to do so, but they claim to say, "Well, no, we represent the." the 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 true good people or the 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 effective good people the realistically good people and you guys are not realistic okay because you're not embracing the corruption that we embrace that we the um so uh and that's you know a, a long issue that's hard to address in one video but anyway i just wanted to reframe what i've been talking about a little bit and see if this particular approach is cl more clarifying um and anyway uh let me know in the comments if you have thoughts about this issue and i look forward to um uh you know uh seeing you in the next video and also please like the video uh, please subscribe to politics 2100 to get more to get notice of future videos and i look forward to seeing you then